Hey guys, Cruel Blonde with I'm Eric. I'm Calvin. Aaron. And we're here with the finale of season one of The, the Beef. Bear. Last time on, we had uh, an episode that was all one shot, but we were so engrossed with the characters and the tension and yep. and everything that was happening, we barely noticed. Yep. <laughs> we we're also kind of that's, watching. I the mean, wrong that's how immersive too. the show is for I, I know we both. I know we talked about it during that, where we're yeah. like, "This is just." I feel like I'm in this kitchen. Exactly. It's just, it's just yeah. Going. Yeah. And yeah. I feel like we're not cutting like at all. No. And if you can have a show that like distracts me so much of that from like one shots, that's pretty special. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So anyway, uh, a lot of stuff has been happening, and I'm curious how they wrap up this first season of The Bear. With a boat. I wrapped it. Good job. I don't actually have wrapping. I'm sorry. I failed. Hmm. The Bear! I'm Carmen Berzato, and today we're going to be making beef brajal. Now, this is a very special dish in my dysfunctional... I love this set. My brother Mike this made this for us every single Hi. Sunday. Can you guys, this is a cute story. Tell it's not a real cooking show because it's too harshly overlit. Painkillers. Now hold on. It gets better. No letter. No goodbye. Nothing except he was did leave me there in was. family's restaurant and his will, which was a nice curveball. Which I've looked carefully at shots in. Yeah. Pretty good at this, right? Fuck you, Oh, fuck. To the go orders. The fuck is going on? It's burning. Oh, don't touch it like that. Shit! Why? Shit! Now there's a problem. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm really. I'm just fucking this up, guys. I'm fucking this up. Stop, please. It's... It was a bear. Look, there's a bear. Yeah, in the cage. Is it a cocaine bear? No, it's on the bridge. I can't do bridge. this. Yeah. Guys, I can't do this. Stop! I can't! I can't do this! He pulls out a revolver. Uh, you know we're gonna call it. I'm right here. I love that. Zoom in as he woke up. Why are you- Hey, bear. Let it rip. Whole body's tense. Would anyone next to you? My brother and I, we would cook a lot together, especially when we were kids. You know, that's that's when we were closest. Food was always our common ground. We wanted to open a restaurant together. Um, we had a name, we had a vibe, all of it. You know, like when I was a kid, if I was nervous, I was scared, I wouldn't want to do something, he'd always tell me to just face it. You know, get it over with. He would always say, um, stupid. He would always say, um, let it rip. <laughs> he stopped letting me into the restaurant a couple of years ago. That hurt, you know? And I think that just, that flicked this switch in me where I was like, okay, fuck you, watch this. And because we had this connection through food and he had made me feel so rejected and lame and shitty and uncool, I, I made this plan where I was gonna go work in all the best restaurants in the world. <laughs> and it sounds ridiculous, you know, me saying that now, but that's, that's, that's what I did. For the first time in my life, I, I started to find this, uh, this station for myself. I knew which vegetables went together, proteins, temperature, sauces, all that shit. And when somebody new came into the restaurant to stage, I'd look at them like they were a competition, like I'm gonna smoke this motherfucker. I felt like I could speak through the food, like I could communicate through creativity and that kind of confidence, you know? Like I was finally, I was, I was good at something that was so new and that was so exciting and I just wanted him to know that and fuck, I just wanted him to be like, good job. And the more he wouldn't respond, and the more our relationship kind of strained, the deeper into this I went and the better I got. And the routine of the kitchen was so consistent and exacting and busy and hard and alive. And I lost track of time and he died. And over the last couple of months, uh, I've been trying to fix it because it was in rough shape. And I think it's very clear that me trying to fix the restaurant was me trying to fix whatever was happening with my brother. 
and I don't know, maybe fix the whole family because that restaurant, it has, and it, it does mean a lot to people. It means a lot to me. I just don't know if it ever meant anything to him. Oh, oh my God, find that letter. Hopefully it's good, nice things. Uh, okay. Look, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but we are gonna be closed for dinner service tonight because we are having a bachelor party in the oh, front. Fuck that! Why? I know, I know, it's Cicero's friends. You see me? Yeah, combining I'm... ingredients. <laughs> yeah. Just take the compliment. <laughs> Jeez. Now I see you and salt and everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you, like, eaten at all these people that you studied? Oh, man. When I was at the CIA, the um, the Culinary Institute of America, not the, you know, mm -hmm. CIA. I was like, huh? <laughs> man, you <laughs> really buried the lead on that. <laughs> Instead of before, I told you I that before. <laughs> I spent every single dollar I had, every last penny, just eating. Mm -hmm. Every single place that I could think of. And one of those places was the... Best meal I ever had. That's so tight. What was the meal? Wait one second because I forgot. Yes. I'm assuming it is until she says otherwise. Huh? Chilean bass. Sea bass. That looks good. I'm not into the tomatoes, but the bass is good. This is really, really, really good. Thank you. Nope. <laughs> what was the best meal you ever ate? It's probably at his. Maybe. Why don't you just pay the vendors? I don't know, Carl. I remember there was one month we didn't have napkins. Wow. I wasn't paying them on time. I was like, Mikey, pay these motherfuckers. We need napkins. And he was like, what's the point? We're not going to be able to pay him next month anyway. Oh, Onto that letter. Mm hmm. You know how much I loved him. How much? A lot. I loved him a lot. Thanks, Chad. It's like the ones you care the most for Mike, like, are the ones who struggled the most to change, too, I think. Mm -hmm. Like Richie, Tina. Yeah. I feel like the other guys maybe didn't have as much of a connection with And a lot of them feel a lot lonelier without I, him uh, here, you know? Mm -hmm. I had some of your donut the other day. Off the floor? Yeah, off the floor. <laughs> Gary keeps it clean. No, I don't want to hear it. That's not a good excuse. Listen, the man <laughs> Carmen did it too. Yeah, he loved it. Carmen's like, fuck! Because <laughs> he was mad that it tasted yeah. good, I think. Wait, so what was the best one? Just best what? Best meal you ever had. Yeah, it was, it was Carmi's. I knew it. I knew it. Mm. <laughs> he is really, really, really good. My praise. You fucking asshole. I'm standing right here doing nothing. Not you, your fucking brother. <laughs> this is a fucking disgrace right here. I don't feel like Richie usually talks bad about Mike. You knew he was using? How could you not? Because I never fucking saw him. I never fucking talked to him. He wouldn't take my calls. He wouldn't let me work in the restaurant. I should have done more. What could you do? I don't fucking know! Big boy, are boys, are time. They fighting? Are you fucking kidding me? Why the hell they fight? Oh my gosh! Drunk idiots. Oh shit! Any word? No. 
nothing yet. We'll let you know the minute he wakes up. But he's still in the ICU? Correct. <sighs> okay. So they need to know whether it's just Good. assault or manslaughter. Who do you call? But you thought of Michael first. His wife? His ex wife? Maybe. Yeah. Hey, this is Tiff. Leave a message after the tone. Damn. Hey. Oh, did you wake up? Jeremovich, let's go. You woke up? You got lucky. You get charged with aggravated assault. <sighs> Thank God. Right? <laughs> Yo. <clears throat> Yo, Carl. Hey. Is he asleep? Yeah. yeah. Huh, wow. Waited. He's been here this whole time. You okay? You're all I got, cuz. Alright. Man. Closest those two have ever sure. talked about their feelings for each other. Oh, well, and then the yeah. scene outside where they were talking about Mike, too, was good. Mm -hmm. So we're back here cleaning. Big pile of blood. <laughs> and what those guys were fighting about didn't even matter, you know? Just, no. These guys were just fighting. I'm so sorry, Chef. Happy you're back. It hurts, Chef. Yes, yeah, Chef. Carmen, yep. what, what the fuck is this? What the fuck is that? This is my station. <laughs> this is my respect. <laughs> Hey. Richard, oh, bendito, my little fella. <laughs> do you ever feel sad? Of course I do, Neil, but I don't talk about it. I keep it all inside. It helps me beat the shit out of people. Is that Paul Rudd? It sounded, it sounded like Paul Rudd, yeah. yeah. That was... We're still gonna get a lunch rush, so I want the front of house locked and loaded, please, all right? Yes, sir. Thank you. Oh, what's this little black book? Recipes. Was it Sydney's? Didn't look. Or was it Mike's? I thought it would have been Mike's, but. Oh, did it match the handwriting on the. Yeah. Hold up, no, no, this is, uh. That's pork, I don't need pork. I'm just a delivery guy. Take it over, Lou. Lou who? God damn it, I fell into the trap. Sydney. Alright, I guess we got pork. Making everything pork. We ain't got the beef anymore. Sorry. Like they can't be closed. They need to make money, right? Mm -hmm. So what do we do? They already used up their two week buffer. Parachute. Don't do it in the kitchen. Shit, because the oil that was spilling there. Just let it burn. You could let it burn and all your problems would go away. That's what they talked about talking about, remember? Mm-hmm. Shit! Come here! Got me! Sweet! What the fuck? Are you crazy? Because the man that he was gone, you know, but uh, could it say why wasn't it delivered? Why was it behind the locker? Yeah, you know, why wasn't it somewhere else? How do you read something like that, you know? <gasps> That handwriting's also not the recipe book, too, right? It's a little more bubbly. 
No acid, so I said. Does he just know <laughs> what she's working on? That's the thing That's that she needed to fix in her dish. That probably. Wasn't, that wasn't ready. What'd say? My yeah. behavior was not okay. It's interesting. He had to like close off his feelings and get a little closure before he could do this. It's a little step towards a, a big step kind of thing. So much on your mind, he has to unburden himself somehow. A shopping list. <laughs> a family recipe. Who's our family? I got it today, Chef. Is he gonna make the family recipe? Uh, family is like <clears throat> your basic vegetables, like carrots, tomatoes, stuff like that. Well, they always have like a family dish they do. Smaller cans taste better. Oh, I see. Right, like they're always like, all right, I'm gonna eat. Yeah. We're giving you an opportunity to work here, even prove yourself, and put some money in your pocket. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I saw you got stabbed. <laughs> How'd it feel? <laughs> you just got stabbed and I like, walked it off, and it was kind of, it was pretty tough. No shit, it was. <laughs> pretty tight. Okay, I'll fix this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. KBL. KBL Electric? Mm-hmm. What's that at the top of the can? Yeah. It doesn't have sauce in it. Something in there. Oh, it's bay leaf. Oh, fuck. Was he trafficking? Is it money? No, it's... Oh, uh, yeah. It's money. Yeah, it's money. There's always money in the banana stand! <laughs> <laughs> Who's though? What the hell? Oh, that's what he... That's why it was a hidden message. Oh, he was... It was the ten cans of tomatoes. <laughs> he got trained! <laughs> oh. So, what, he borrowed all that money and then he hit put it? it in here? But how do you put it in cans like this? Like, if it came from... Keep an Italian here. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, wow. we got another 10. Just gotta reseal it. 20. Yeah. yeah. Reseal it, right? Oh, my gosh. You know, Richie, you can finally get a new CD for your car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can finally get a new Get you a license. Oh, you can finally get you a new You can finally get you a new car. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, we can do all those ideas you wanted to do. Sid, quit fucking around. Grab a can opener. <laughs> that doesn't answer any what? questions. <laughs> quit fucking around. She just got here. Danish design. Tasting menu at the bar. Window on the side. For sandwiches. Yeah. Cammy. I'm gonna redesign the place. Yeah. However they want to. Okay. Show you motherfuckers how it's done. What do you call it? We're gonna open a new restaurant, right? We're gonna rename it. Let it rip. Maybe. Hmm. So he's like building up the the money and stuff so that he can make the restaurant that he wants and not just. Yeah, yeah. Real, real big there. So they just got three hundred thousand dollars, and they did not let that guy know. <laughs> closed out of beef. The beef is closed.
follows. Thank you for your patronage. The bear is coming. Makes sense. Just call it the bear. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So I'll have some spaghetti, family meal. Yeah, the sister's there. Did grandfather die from it? No, my grandfather killed him. Yeah, after you were born. I'm not understanding the fuck happened. Let her rip. <laughs> And spaghetti. You just sauce, open them and resale them. And then left a note for yeah. him to find. Yeah. Maybe for whenever he like closed up the shop. Like it was in a weird place for him to find that note. You know what I mean? But like, I feel like it leads to the point of like, here's a bunch of money. Open up your own place. Yeah. Here's like he didn't. He wasn't trying to leave him a shitty place where you're gonna struggle and have all these problems. Here, do your own thing. Here's your dream. And I'm gonna stop ordering beef. Because it wasn't like the first episode they were struggling getting beef. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then the here suppliers getting, just weren't bringing it to Here you got pork, and it's like, yeah, yeah. sorry, take it up to these guys. You know, I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't really. Maybe we'll get more into season two on yeah, that. Yeah, no, definitely. But, but I feel like that's loosely the idea, maybe, of what happened. Is like he was trying to leave him a place of his own. Uh, I'm, I'm very confident that you're completely right. No uh, doubt on my mind. I just don't know what else. This is it's one of the strangest best episodes of television I've ever watched agreed just that monologue in the beginning yeah they feel like they're they had like no cuts on that my favorite thing about it is it doesn't feel like a monologue it feels like there's a guy talking no yeah I didn't even notice any cuts just because and it felt like it was just like he stops and he's thinking he comes back and he thinks he comes back and it it seemed like someone who had gone through something who was trying to think of like Mm -hmm. what do I say and I'm just saying what I'm thinking like I'm not you know I'm not yeah. It's not a planned speech I have. Right. It's just Talking kind of from the, heart. the things I've been yeah. feeling, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. The way that he would do pauses, too. Like, it's not <laughs> it's not television pauses. No. Like, that's real-life pauses, the way that he was doing it. There was one point where he didn't speak for, like, six seconds. Sure. You know? Like... But well, sometimes it was, like, it was something that was tougher on him. Yeah. Or other times it was, like, he was, like... Yeah. Now what do I say? What's next? What else do I, I love feel? it, man. Like, I just love that these characters who do not want you to see their vulnerability like cannot help but show it a little and when they do it just is like a big gaping wound they have you know it just well, so yeah. it feels so real it's covering up a lot of hurt yeah yeah and they they can all feel so lonely because they all had this special relationship with michael because that's the kind of guy he was he made you feel like everybody was his best friend but just because someone makes you feel that way doesn't mean that they're not hurting too. I mean, they're not going through their own stuff. And well, yeah, I mean, it felt like Michael knew something bad was going to happen. Robin Williams was the funniest guy in the room. Yeah. Every room he went into, you know. Yeah. What's well, the uh, the story of the the guy goes to a therapist and says I'm super depressed and I'm lonely and there's nothing can cheer me up, and the doctor goes, Well, there's a famous clown that just came into town. You should go see his show. And he's like, I am that clown. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. KBL Electric. I love that scene. Uh, what, what do you do? You just call them and you say, hey, hey, KBL, can you send some spaghetti but put $100,000 in it? <laughs> like, you can, there's ways of opening those cans up and then it's pressing them back together. Yeah, but why do you pay KBL so much money then? It's just a way of, well, he's not. I paying. think those were, I think those That's were. That's how much money's in there. Yeah. I think those were deposits. So it was just that tracking, was making it wasn't into. about. Him he was just tallying KBL. up how much he had put in the yeah. cans. So I'm saying there's three hundred thousand dollars in KBL, like three thirty. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Isn't that what the total was yeah. on the bottom of that? That I think so. Page yeah, thing. It was three hundred something, which was close to the amount of money that he had borrowed. What were you saying, Eric? You were saying something else. Um, uh, the scene between Sydney and um, crap. Who's the name of the guy that makes the cake? Marcus. No. Yeah. yeah. Marcus? Marcus Salazar. Why do I not have his name? Anyway, I love that scene. 
especially the line that was when she was talking about how like we couldn't really afford much, but when we went out, it felt special, even, even when if it, it wasn't. wasn't. Like she's yeah. been to the best places ever, but <laughs> she still has that fond memory. Like I just relate so hard to that. It's like especially when I was young and we didn't have a whole lot of money. Like going out, we didn't go to the nice places. You no, know, yeah. we didn't go to anything like it just that was so special to me. Mm-hmm. You know? Oh yeah, I remember. I remember when we finished the building our our arch building Mm -hmm. like we were hot and sweaty and tired and everything and we drove to Caldwell and went to the Dairy Queen and we each got a blizzard Mm -hmm. and that was like that was a huge treat yeah getting to ride around in the car and eat a blizzard Mm -hmm. like that was so special but that was like you know I don't know why the it's it's not that special to other people. I, I, but I, I, like we went to Ryan's and the yeah. food was definitely subpar. But sure, it was yeah. such a magical place for us. Like we all the servers knew us. Like, sure, you know it's all great. I love the story, but I don't know why. But for some reason the riding in the car part just made it funny to me. But I'm like, usually we didn't get to ride in the car. Yeah, <laughs> well, you know, that yeah. Think of. It was just, <laughs> like it was so rare that the entire family was in the car. Mm-hmm. Sure, and we weren't like going someplace that most of us didn't want to go. Gotta yeah. Go, yeah. There's a meeting. You gotta go visit these people or something. Sure. This is a hell of a show. And there can be moments where it's just, it feels like it's just pure comedy and there's, and there's trauma and drama. Sure. The characters just feel so real. Yeah. You know? They're just, they're struggling. But. The two things I like that felt callbacky as well was uh, when the fire started. Like, Carmen just watched it. Yeah. And there was a conversation before where it's like a fire starts and you watch it. And you just think, like, if this whole place burns down, my anxiety's gone. There's nothing to stress about. Yeah. There's nothing else to worry about. This place about. is gone and yeah. I don't have to <laughs> carry that stress around anymore. But then Michael's gone, too. Yeah. Because if I can fix this place, I can I can, I can fix him. Sure, saying, you, know. you get the idea, like, oh, I'll fix him or I'll... It'd be like bringing him back or something. But Yeah. The other thing I really liked was uh, Richie, like, he called his wife who in his phone is called, like, Richie Bad News. And rather than saying any kind of bad news thing, like, you think he's going to be like, hey, I'm here, can you get yeah. me out or anything, he calls her and mm-hmm. then on the message leaves, like, uh, I'm sorry for yeah. some things that I've done. Sure. Mm-hmm. Doesn't say anything about where he's Something at. Something about her dad. Yeah. Said he called uh, her mm-hmm. dad, whatever he called him. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if that's, like, just Obviously insulting. A regret, a regret, if it's, yeah. 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 Tiff. Thank goodness that guy didn't die. Was that Paul Rudd? The voice of whatever? <laughs> of Ball Smashers yeah. or whatever? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't see any credit for Ball Breakers. There's no credit for him. That, I'm like... Sound like him. <laughs> I'm like 99.9%. <laughs> could it have been Joel McHale at all? Uh, sure, okay. Maybe. Like, could it have been his voice? Because he's been in the show. Yeah. And he it was a clip he in is, this episode as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he is, guess, uh, he's credited in this episode. Sure. It could be from but that. But he also just appeared. Or it could be from him showing up for that second, yeah. too. So we, I don't know. We didn't uh, I need pick, to listen to it again. Yeah. We didn't pick back up on that. We didn't pick back up on the recipe book that was found. So, yeah. so the recipe book wasn't Sydney's? Well, it the handwriting didn't match either Michael or Sydney's handwriting. We saw both of them this episode, almost as if it was put there to compare. It, it didn't match her book that she was like writing. I don't the, think so. I, I thought, thought it did. Well, maybe it did. I just, it matched closer than Mikey's. Her, it's just that the recipe felt like it was a little more bubbly to me in terms of the handwriting. But I just gotta see it again, I suppose, to actually direct comparison. Sorry. Braised uh, rib, right? Yeah. Braised short rib. Isn't wasn't it braised whatever what she was gonna yeah. do? So he's just looking at it and saying you need acidity. Yeah, that's what I thought it was yeah. like. It probably is that then. Her stuff. Yeah. Damn it. Yeah. All right. What's what did the other side say? Too? Uh, it was the family, yeah. family spaghetti or yeah, family spaghetti or something. Family meal spaghetti. Ten guard, Ten guard clothes. Table. Oh, that's what he was making at the end. Yeah, I was just saying when he said about family thing, he's like, I got it. I'm like, okay, he's making the family spaghetti. Uh, <laughs> San Marzano tomatoes, two 20 ounce cans. The smaller cans taste better. 
because in the beginning he was talking about why are we buying these 20 ounce cans instead of the 10 cans Man. because the 10 cans are cheaper per ounce and he's like we should be ordering the 10 cans not using these little cans because he didn't understand why he was spending so much money buying the small cans hmm. but there's a little hint here I'm trying to remember if they talked about spaghetti earlier which I felt like they did something with spaghetti mm-hmm. or talked about spaghetti or um like I can't I don't see it in my notes I don't remember exactly no that's what that's what uh Richie wanted him to make the spaghetti right? like they were taking it off the like, menu or something like that yeah he was like you know don't don't do all this fancy shit just make spaghetti you know that's that's what <laughs> that's what we do that's what we do yeah and you're trying to make something better and different yeah <clears throat> yeah I guess it yeah I guess it's true okay so there was something about spaghetti mm-hmm. Like if he would have been making more spaghetti, he probably would have found it sooner. He would have found it sooner, sure. But he was trying to make this, as he called it, this shithole better instead of doing something else. Honestly, that whole thing, like, that's just, all right, here you go, make sauce. <laughs> that's all it is, and that's yeah. spaghetti. It's just a clue, I guess, leading him towards the cans. Yeah. Let her rip. Here, the plan I, I, was I, I to did this for you. Let it rip. Have the money. So yeah. Like I mean, what was the? Ah, damn, that was, I hate this. was so painful. So it, the the motivation behind him hiding the money in the cans is it just to launder it to a point where Carmen can use it to to start his dream restaurant. I mean, because like if he could if he could have just right? borrowed it's... the money and given it to Carmen to start a restaurant. Yeah and not kill himself, then I feel like that is the better of the two options. Mm -hmm. Sure, and also right now, he has a lot of debt from the other guy that needs to be paid back, which is the money here that he owes, right? Assumedly, this money. I was going to say, this money is probably already laundered if Cicero gave it to you. you Sure, but it's from him. Yeah, but that's a debt, though, right? It's not like like he gets this for nothing, really, right? No. So like, he still owes two hundred ninety-eight thousand and fifty dollars. He does, but what, what he yeah. can do here, and maybe Cicero will be cool with, is like he can officially get everything started and start making real money in order to start paying that back. You know, he can't. He just couldn't make money here. I guess maybe he was borrowing it from him because he's like, well, I'm not going to be able to get all the money I need for his restaurant in one. Maybe. But if I borrow yeah. fifty thousand here, mm-hmm. twenty thousand yeah. here, then it's not so suspicious. <laughs> It's just a failing company. And I mean, he borrowed which it and then he killed himself. Restaurants take a long time like that. To, like, if you're keeping trying to make them work, it it stacks up. Yeah. It's totally believable that he would be 300000 like, in debt. Cicero, like, he seems like he's a nice guy, but also I think he kind of understands, like, this guy took out the loan and now he's dead. And it's kind of unfair for me to ask you to pay it back, but you gotta pay just give me your you, next you, kid. You owe me. Yeah. So some parties, bachelor, my kid's birthday party. You know, I, I don't think I think that if he learned that hey, we found the money, it might be a little different. I don't know. I'll be interested what they're gonna do with that then, if it's gonna be trying to like conceal it from Cicero or not. Mm. I feel like that's the main motivation behind hiding it in the cans because. Yeah. Otherwise, why don't you just have a bag of money in a bus stop locker and yeah. give Carmi the key or something like that? Yeah. You know, if he's if he's trying to keep it cash and not have it go through like inheritance mm-hmm. and stuff like that and lose a bunch of taxes. I've uh, just love all the characters in this. Took me a bit, but I really do. Took me a bit with. Yeah. With Richie and Tina. Yeah. If Richie's like what you want It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia characters to do. <laughs> like you want like to start see, improving. You want to see that they have an actual heart. <laughs> yeah. Instead of just doubling down. <laughs> Instead of just always being, you know. Uh, the worst version of themselves that they could possibly be. Yeah. In showing in vul- vulnerabilities, yes. And, <laughs> and learning the wrong lessons. I feel like I still have some questions on the process of how this all worked and everything. And uh-huh. what... Mike's thoughts. Again, yeah. I don't know if we're, we're getting into that either. Sure. But I don't know. Maybe we'll maybe we expand on it more in season two as well. I imagine so. Maybe. Hopefully. And yeah. it's like it's not just here's a business and starting yeah. a new restaurant and stuff, but it's sure. also building yep. upon the history and 
Carmen. Like, I like seeing Carmen open up here. Um, the meeting was really good. Yeah. Yeah, and unlike a lot of people that were watching this live, you're like, oh, I want to watch more now. We get to watch more next week because I was, I, I'm, I, I'm now fully open to like every character, and now I just want to like get into it more. Oh yeah, and we get to, <laughs> so I'm grateful for that. Yeah. Oh, man. All right. Well, that's gonna be it for our thoughts on this reaction and season one of the Bear as a whole. And if you guys enjoyed. Make sure you come back next week when we start season two. Yes! Yeah. Shout! Guys, thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed the bear with us. Make sure you subscribe so you miss out on next week's episode. And you can see more right now at blindwave.com. Just put the link there. Yeah. Down First the four episodes below. season two. And full links available. You'll we'll well. probably need these. Ow. That probably hurt them. And this. No! No, wait!